This is the Silicon Valley BART Extension, a six-mile tunnel system cutting straight through downtown San Jose. It's one of the most technically demanding infrastructure projects in the United States, designed to finally connect Silicon Valley with the rest of the Bay Area. Beneath busy streets, engineers are carving twin tunnels just feet from building foundations, threading through seismic zones, and coordinating around live utilities. But this is just one part of something much bigger, a wave of mega projects now under construction across the country. From Chicago's massive rail overhaul, to Nevada's new 525 kilovolt power corridor. From airports being rebuilt in Columbus and Newark to new bridges along the Northeast Corridor. The U.S. is quietly entering a construction era unlike anything it's seen in generations. And this is the story of how those projects are transforming the way America moves, powers, and connects itself for the future. Let's start in Silicon Valley where, ironically, the most advanced piece of tech for a lot of people is an underground tunnel. The Silicon Valley BART extension is the kind of project that looks deceptively straightforward on a map. Just connect Fremont to San Jose and Santa Clara. But on the ground, it's the infrastructure equivalent of brain surgery. Phase one was the easy part, about 10 miles of dual track mostly along an existing railroad corridor with new stations at Milpitas and Berryessa slash North San Jose. Don't get me wrong, easy still meant negotiating right of way with Union Pacific, threading electrified third rail systems alongside freight routes, building elevated guideways over highways and creeks, and dealing with Bay Area soil that likes to move and swell like sourdough. Milpitas, by the way, didn't just become a BART stop. It got linked into the VTA light rail with pedestrian bridges and intermodal links that actually make the system feel connected. But phase two? That's where things get spicy. Six miles long, roughly five of those miles underground, running through downtown San Jose, where you can't sneeze without hitting a utility line, a seismic fault, or a historic structure that absolutely cannot settle by a millimeter. The crews are using a large diameter tunnel boring machine to carve twin barrel tunnels 30 to 70 feet below the city and those tunnels are lined with gasketed precast concrete segments to keep the water out and the structure tight under earthquake loads. Real-time settlement monitoring is the name of the game here because you do not want the ground moving under a city while you're passing beneath it. And then you've got stations like the one near Diridon, which is essentially a subterranean fortress built with cut and cover excavation, slurry walls, internal bracing, the whole toolkit. Everything's sequenced like an orchestra, structural slabs, MEP systems, ventilation, finishes, platform screen doors, train control, fare collection. Nothing goes live until it all speaks the same language and BART's safety and operations sign off. And if you're thinking, wow, that's a ton of sweat and late nights for a few underground miles, yes. But here's the payoff. Once BART actually slices through San Jose and reaches Santa Clara, you don't just add stations, you unlock an integrated Bay Area transit network. You give people a reason not to drive, reduce congestion, and actually connect the region's tech economy to the labor market without burning an extra hour in the car. That's not just engineering, that's reprogramming how a region moves. Now let's jump to Chicago, America's rail switchboard, where the CREATE program is doing triage on a century-old traffic jam. If you've ever looked at a map of U.S. railroads, they basically all high-five in Chicago. The problem? For decades, those high-fives were happening at ground level. Freight and passenger trains crossing paths, waiting, stalling, idling, stuck behind signals, built when rotary phones were still a vibe. Create flips that story by building flyovers where rail lines cross, grade separations where roads dive under or hop over tracks, and modern signal systems that actually know where everything is in real time. Take the Englewood flyover. It's not just a bridge, it's a relief valve for a knot of rail lines where Metra's Rock Island District used to sit at grade with a major Norfolk Southern corridor. The fix, lift Metra up and over with long approaches, beefy concrete piers, and girders that can take the pounding of passenger service. Multiply that logic across the city, 
new rail-to-rail -rail flyovers so trains stop playing chicken at crossings, new road underpasses so cars aren't stuck miles deep waiting for a mile-long freight to pass, and big drainage improvements so these new underpasses don't become swimming pools every time it rains. Then there's the brain upgrade, centralized traffic control, and positive train control, fiber optic trunk lines, microprocessor-based interlockings, replacing old relay cabinets. Translation, the trains talk to each other, dispatchers have a clean picture, and safety systems can step in when a human has a lapse. Is it glamorous? Nope. Does it save hours of delay per day across the network and keep freight and the economy moving? Absolutely. Create is proof that sometimes the sexiest engineering is the stuff that turns chaos into choreography. From rail knots to runway knots, Columbus, Ohio is giving its main airport a full redesign, and it's the kind of practical mega project most travelers will notice the second they step through the door. John Glenn Columbus International is swapping out an aging mid-century terminal for a bigger, smarter building with more gates, wide body capability, and a baggage system that actually keeps up with modern traffic. Structurally, it's a mix of structural steel and post-tensioned concrete. Think wide open concourses, long spans, and robust decks that can handle heavy live loads. The envelopes built with energy efficient glazing and modern mechanical systems. And yes, the target is sustainability. LED certification, smart HVAC, the works. Airside, they're tightening geometry to match the latest FAA standards. Wider taxiways, new high-speed exits so planes aren't crawling forever, and upgraded lighting and nav aids so pilots and ground control are on the same page in all weather. Pavements are engineered like a layer cake with drainage that keeps frost heave from turning your runway into a roller coaster. Landside, they're fixing the choke points, New entrance roads, better drop-off flow, expanded parking, smarter stormwater systems. And then there's the baggage handling system overhaul, which is basically a robot-run highway under your feet. Fast conveyors, inline explosive detection, airline-specific sortation, all crammed among columns and penetrations that have to line up like a Tetris masterclass. All this while the airport stays open. Staging plans, nighttime work, temporary wayfinding, it's a live concert where they're replacing the stage mid-show and nobody drops a note. But maybe the most underrated mega project right now is out in Nevada, Greenlink West. On paper, it's a transmission line. In the real world, it's the backbone of the energy transition for a huge swath of the West. We're talking a 525 kilovolt AC line strung across hundreds of miles, linking substations, tying in solar farms, wind resources, geothermal fields, the whole renewable buffet. These lines don't just get built, they're discovered, like a route across mountains and deserts that keeps risk low, environmental impact lower, and reliability high. The towers are a mix of lattice steel and tubular monopoles, chosen based on terrain and visual impact. Every step is bespoke, soil testing for corrosivity and stability, foundations that go from spread footings in solid ground to deep caissons where the geology gets sketchy, access roads carved out to reach tower sites that are often nowhere near civilization. And then there's stringing conductors, those thick cables that carry the juice. Picture tensioners, winches, helicopters in the roughest spots, and teams watching sag and tension like hawks. Because at this scale, gravity is not your friend. Environmental stewardship here is not a buzzword, it's the job. The line runs through sensitive desert ecosystems, Think habitat for protected species like the desert tortoise. So you get low pressure equipment, surgical clearing, dust suppression, revegetation plans with native species, and monitoring to make sure it sticks. Substations on each end are high voltage fortresses. Breakers, transformers, switchgear, protective relays, SCADA control, grounding grids built to harmlessly dissipate fault currents. The commissioning is a symphony of voltage synchronization, phase balance, and high voltage testing until the grid says, okay, you're one of us now. If we're serious about decarbonizing the grid, projects like GreenLink West are the capillaries and arteries that make it physically possible. Swing back to the Northeast Corridor and let's talk about the Portal Bridge replacement in New Jersey, which might be the single most cathartic project for anyone who's ever sat on an Amtrak train 
waiting for a 110-year-old swing bridge to cooperate. The original portal bridge had to pivot open for maritime traffic, and every time it did, the locking mechanism was like, what if we don't? Queue delays, crews with mallets, and a train schedule that aged you five years a week. The fix is gloriously simple. A new fixed span, high-level bridge on a slightly new alignment so trains never stop. No more swing, no more prey and lock, just fly. Building it in marshland is the tricky part. Foundations have to reach down through soft alluvial soils to something that can hold a modern rail superstructure. Drilled shafts, driven piles, ground improvement, and all of it staged with temporary trestles and cofferdams to work around tides and the river. The superstructure uses steel girders with a reinforced concrete deck designed for higher speeds and the relentless beating of dozens of trains every hour. They're floated in or craned in piece by piece, field spliced, bolted, welded, and cast. Overhead, catenary gets installed to match the electric fleet. Signal systems get reprogrammed and tested endlessly to mesh with Amtrak and NJ Transit Control. And the redundancy built into the new control systems means fewer mystery delays. When the new span goes live, the old one retires. Deconstructed carefully, piers removed, riverbed restored. It's not just a bridge. It's a stress ball for the entire Northeast Corridor. While we're at Newark, the airport itself is getting a new people mover. And it's not just a nicer version of the old air train. It's a rethink. The Newark Elizabeth Air Train Project isn't only about shuttling people between terminals. It adds a connection south to Elizabeth, stitching the airport more tightly into the regional transit web with NJ Transit and Amtrak. That's huge, because airports aren't islands anymore, they're transit hubs that need to absorb millions smoothly. Technically, it's classic elevated guideway work with a modern twist. Precast concrete segments stacked onto reinforced concrete piers designed for wind loads and seismic in coastal New Jersey. Foundations vary, steel piles where needed, drilled shafts elsewhere. The segments can be assembled span by span or with balanced cantilever methods depending on the site, which minimizes interference with roads and airside ops. Stations are glass and steel, modular, with platform screen doors to keep things safe and fast, full ADA compliance, big displays, and HVAC built for the reality of summer humidity and winter ice. The trains themselves run on communications-based train control, meaning precise headways, automatic operation, and centralized monitoring with fail-safes on fail-safes. Third rail power, substations spaced to maintain voltage, emergency walkways built into the guideway, because you plan for the five minutes you hope never happen. The hardest part isn't the tech, it's the logistics building around active terminals, roads, and rails. So nights, off-peak hours, and as much prefabrication as possible. When it opens, the difference will be night and day, less friction, less confusion, faster transfers, and a link to Elizabeth that pays dividends for workers and passengers alike. Finally, let's hit the Pacific Northwest, where the Puget Sound Gateway Program is stitching together the highways that freight has needed for decades. If you only read headlines, it's Finishing SR-167 and SR-509. But in the engineering world, that means six miles of brand new highway, major interchanges, bridges over active rail lines, and earthwork on a scale that looks like a Minecraft creative mode. The aim is simple. Connect the Port of Tacoma and the Port of Seattle with the interstates and industrial zones without forcing every truck to crawl through city streets that were never designed for them. Earthwork is huge here. Mass grading, embankments, slope stabilization. Subgrades are moisture conditioned and compacted, then layered with aggregate and either asphalt or Portland cement concrete, depending on design and performance needs. Where the highways cross rail or step into dense interchanges, you get precast, pre-stressed concrete girder bridges. Fast to build, long spans, reliable performance. Abutments and piers are cast in place and set on deep foundations, driven piles or drilled shafts, because this is a seismically active region and you design for the shake, not the dream. Drainage and stormwater also play starring roles with culverts and retention elements
that handle the Pacific Northwest's very extra rain moods. When it's done, you've reduced congestion, improved freight mobility, and made the economy more resilient without adding to the misery of local commuters. Win-win. Zoom out, and what ties all these projects together isn't just the concrete and steel. It's the philosophy, build smarter connections. BART knits Silicon Valley into the Bay Area network. Create frees the rail arteries that feed the nation. Columbus builds an airport that actually fits how people travel now. Nevada wires up the future of energy. Portal ends a century-old headache. Newark's air train becomes a real regional link, not just a terminal shuttle. Puget Gateway completes the missing links for trade. These are not vanity projects. They're the infrastructure version of upgrading your entire OS. The patch notes might look boring. Added high-speed exit taxiway, but the performance boost? Massive. So yeah, America's under construction, and not in the flimsy temporary way. In the real, permanent, bet the future way. If you want more videos like this, hit that like button so the algorithm knows you're one of the infrastructure nerds. Subscribe for weekly mega project breakdowns and tell me in the comments which project you want a full episode on next. Personally, I'm itching to do a deep dive on the San Jose tunneling strategy because the way they're threading through a live downtown is wild. But if you want a Nevada power grid special, say the word. Either way, I'll see you in the next one.